another day at the workshop. This is nearly a week from when it was mapped. Be one week tomorrow, I think. But I've still not managed to drive it much because the weather's crap and I've been busy and we've been fixing the engine mounts and all kind of stuff. But today it's dry, it's freezing cold, but it's dry. So we're gonna finally get to test this and make sure there's no more teething troubles before I can actually give it full stacks. You know, we don't know. It might be fine, it might not be. But we've got to, you know, check in if there's any more weak points. Obviously I've got the big drag radios to go on as well. But I also want to see what kind of traction it's got as it is, so that'll be interesting. In here today, it's MR Silver MR2 Land. There was literally one there, one there, one there, and my one. Obviously that one is the test mule one. This one is getting this, which is a, a 225 basically, not a Bammer. What's it called, APX? This is the APX one. Yeah. And this one, we changed it to the white one. Yeah. So basically the APXs are the early version of bands and basically the same bar and there's no wide band, well there is about to be, <laughs> no wide band and no VVT. VVT don't make much difference on on like this really, but wide band's very handy. But thanks to the way Volkswagen Audi have done the wiring looms in a really good way, Thomas is able to adapt it now to work with the wide band. So then that will be going in this one. And yeah, this one's basically a, a very nice road car. Very, really tight. Pardon? Yeah, it's the cleanest one we've had by far. Very nice car. So good road car one. And it's just gonna get this basically standard, but with KO4 and all that, it's gonna be a bloody good car anyway. It's a base 260 yeah. great setup. Yeah basic 260 brake but in, that's fast very fast right been out for two little test runs and same problem both times and problem that didn't occur on the dyno but has occurred here and it hardly ever occurs for me that is boost pipes popping off that one the first time no that one the second time this one the first time and looking at the log it's also going into overboost and the reason it's going to overboost looks to be the same reason it's popping the pipes off is when i'm letting off the throttle unless i let off super sharply to well i don't even think how sharp it matters actually but if i let off anything well the lighter i let off should we say the more it's going to be like it um it boost spikes because the turbo just falls you know it wants to do so much suddenly it's got nowhere to go and it pressurizes pipes spikes them pops them off because although boost pipes are fine at like you know two bar plus if you do them up right it's different when you're silly silly amounts of boost and that's what it's clearly spiking to so for the first time in wow maybe 20 years or over 20 years I'm going to run a blow-off valve, a dump valve, whatever you want to call it. Normally, it's the first thing I remove. But on this case, it's actually an issue. Thanks to Gigantic Turbo, it wants to uh, spike way too much. A little spike, you know, that's a given. Normally, when you let off the gas, even on loads of cars I've had, when you're running like two bar plus, the spike is small. But when this turbo wants to give you know even way more than uh what is given the spike is just too massive and it fucking goes bananas and pops things off so honestly as much as i never expected to it's gonna get a blow off valve we've got a couple here and i think i've probably got a t-piece here as well so it's easy to try because the thing is the next i want to try is with the blow off valve a will it fix this which i think it will and b is there any overboost on throttle? I don't think there is, but we'll see. Also, in other news, I did finally get to give it four beans properly for the first time, and like uh, I went to like seven and a half thousand RPM in third, and it had full traction. So, uh, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous, and the back does not feel like it's going in a straight line, but it is not spinning. So, good times. 
Well, for the first time in genuinely over 20 years, I've just fitted a dump valve, blow off valve, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's literally one that we had kicking around. It came on one of the 180s we bought, Turbo Smart Compact. Oh, that attempt was a complete failure. Basically, um, I don't even know if that blow off valve was opening. I couldn't hear it, but it popped off the boost pipe again, and then I just took the thing off and put it in the Mitty vac and it wouldn't even hold a vacuum so I couldn't it wouldn't open with the Mitty vac luckily there's another one kicking around this forge one and this does also I'm bleeding like fuck um I just checked that in the Mitty vac and it does I mean that terrible smart one for all I know is like Chinese fuck knows I mean I don't know what this one is either they both came on cars but this one does open and does hold vacuum so hopefully this might help again i don't even know if uh this is a complete solution but it's certainly looking at logs spiking like fuck so well that's pretty frustrating <laughs> no matter what i do it's still spiking and popping off the boost pipe and as i realized i mean this is a beauty of data logging it shows that Fitting a blower valve, or just generally blower valves in general, are absolutely useless in this scenario. Yeah, they'll work if you're going straight to a closed throttle, because then you've got vacuum. But if you're going from 100% throttle to, say, 50%, like I'm doing, you still ain't got no vacuum. So you can have... 20 blower files, 20 of the biggest ones in the world. They ain't gonna fucking open, so they ain't gonna do anything. So basically, fitting this forge one, it's completely got rid of the chatter. Like, total, really is. It's just like nothing. Like, you see a psh, 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 fucking water gas, just so shit. <laughs> yeah, it's made it sound rubbish, although it stops giving me a uh, headache in the car, so it swings and roundabouts. But it does nothing for this spike situation when I get off the throttle, like partially, because partially there's no vacuum. I mean, the map sensor is reading from the inlet manifold. And at 50% throttle, you know, when I'm at, say, two bar, 100% throttle, then get off it. The reason I'm doing this is because if anyone knows how to actually fucking drive a really fast car or just on the limit anyway, you know, drifting and shit like that, you, you know, you know it a lot anyway. It's about fucking balance and just suddenly jumping off the throttle is not necessarily a good idea if you're right on the limit of fucking traction because things will change rapidly. So I was get, you know, I was getting off it more gradually and in that case, blow foul does fucking nothing. So, yeah. The only real solution so far, well, there's probably more to it. I'm going to send the logs to Bill at Badger 5 so he can see him in the morning. And hopefully he has an idea. I mean, I've looked through and there's nothing obvious at all. You know, it's like even like the boost control solenoid is 0% duty cycle at that time. It's not like the solenoid's trying to make it boost more. So, yeah, I mean, you could say, like, the wastegate's too small. And that's, you know, but I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure it's that, as in, I don't know if the wastegate could react fast enough anyway to dump all that out. I'm not, I don't really know. But something's a bit weird. But either way, it's kind of proved that blower files are even less useful than I thought. But the spike only happens for, like, Wow. It's hard to tell because it keeps popping off the, boot, the pipes, but the time when it didn't, the spike was like really momentary. So it's not an issue as such, apart from popping off them. So if limp mode is adjusted, so overboost, it has to overboost for more than like, I don't know, half a second at a time or something, then it won't affect that. And then it's just a case of keeping the pipes on. Well, after far too long, every one of the 
clamps on the compressor to well bulkhead side are now like t-bolt Michelot style clamps so when you do this you realize how many connections there are there's like 12 clamps there's like six different fucking connections between all these metal bits so it's like eh, it's not ideal it would be a lot less likely of things to pop off if there was a lot less things to pop off i mean technically you could make this out of probably two pieces you'd still have to it can't really be one piece and get it off easy because even as it is it's quite a bugger to get off but it needs to be flexible enough to get it off of it and to fucking you know I wouldn't want to set it where I'd have to take the back box off just to remove the boost pipe. Fuck that. <laughs> but, the, you know, this might be enough. I, I, I generally, generally don't like this type of clamp. I prefer normal Jubilees. But the reason I say that is because these things are very finicky in... Oh, I don't know how to explain it. When they're on the right size pipe... They seem to clamp brilliantly, but they're very finicky at they have to be just fucking right. And if they're not, they seem worse than Jubilees. Jubilees, and wow, well, like I've proven for fucking ever, you know, 30 PSI, maybe a bit more. Jubilees are fine. But these are struggling at like 38, well, <laughs> more than that, 40 plus, 2.8 bar. You know, they're popping off well below 30 well above 30 i mean 30 psi jubilee clips are seem always has been for me absolutely fine but we're beyond that so billet badger 5 sent me a revised map to see if that helps and also i'm just gonna unplug the mac valve and try it you know wastegate only and if it's still over boost then then i know it's some kind of weird, uh, you know, something's wrong with the gate. But either way, it's, it's fucking minor. But unfortunately, a mix of bad weather and life getting in the way has basically made this a delay. But been busy still. Um, as you can probably see, it's silver MR2 land, silver 180 MR2 land. So you got mine. You got this one, which is being swapped. Well, it is near enough finished to a, like a, a 225 spec. It's an APX engine, so the the early version of a BAM, basically. Um, being swapped to that. This is for our friend Andrew. So it, it's like a customer car, but a friend of ours. And then obviously the other 180T one, which is the, yeah, it's like a, a test demo development mule basically so that's that one plus all the other bits that Thomas is fabricating and ah oh, it's just loads and this one you know what my plans changed with this one and I'm gonna build it into a bit of a I mean it's caged up and buckets and all that so I'm going to build it into a bit of a track weapon. But to sell it, I'm not going to keep it. I've decided, I mean, I should, I'm stupid basically. I am, I'm rubbish at making money. I basically spend far too much time and money having fun or attempting to have fun maybe. And then making myself absolutely fucking skint because I'm not actually making money, which you kind of need to have fun in, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I thought to myself, hang on a minute. I The whole reason for this was like almost like a backup for when this breaks. But it's like, this is, these aren't like normal cars. If this breaks, it's not off the road for fucking six months with a, a long and expensive repair can change an engine or a gearbox or a dry shafts or whatever in like a fucking day a weekend at most so it's not going to be off the road for a long time so i don't need a backup car you know what i mean so 
what I should do with this and what people said to me all along was build it 180 swap and then sell it to somebody because you know how many of you would like you know a 180 swap say 280 300 brake I don't know caged up MR2 truck weapon on coilovers and blah 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 I reckon most of you a lot of you and I can do it because I've got near enough all the bits so it's not gonna cost me a lot I've got an engine I've got turbo I've got exhaust it'll have a full four inch turbo back exhaust with a cat on the back basically my old exhaust off this um the big injectors the map tcu off this everything it'd be a f hell of a car but then i'm gonna sell it to somebody it probably have the the semi slicks off this as well because i have the drag radios to go on this soon um i get a, a hard top for it because yeah, they're expensive, but it makes it look so much better. It's worth the extra money, I think. And yeah, I don't know what else I do. Not too much. I don't want to spend a fortune because it's, it's to be sold to make money. But I think this is now going to be a car, a project car to build. And you'll, it'll be built on the channel. But it will then, at the end of it, be sold maybe to one of you lot. So... Yeah, obviously, um, in that note, when I do start, you know, getting on with this, it'd be good to have some of your inputs with it, you know, what things you would like or not like and whatever, as I do it as well. So, yeah, that is the plan. And then if I do want another one, as you know, to supplement this, I'll just build another one. I can, that's the thing. It's like, why am I worrying or rushing about building this one when I could build this one, sell it, and then build another one while not being absolutely fucking skint, which is what I've been at the moment. So like I'm in a lucky position where I'm able to do this. So rather than being an idiot, like I am all my fucking life, actually do the actual business decision of making actual money i'm rubbish at monetizing my my talents if you know what i mean everyone always says that to me like people who i know with like loads of money and fancy jobs they're like you should you know you could make a fortune off the your knowledge and blah 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 blah. i'm like yeah maybe but i don't know how i've always been rubbish at that i've always had this knowledge and ability of stuff but i just i suck at monetizing it basically and i also very good at wasting money but I'm going to try and, try and do it properly now. And it starts with this. Thomas is the same. Thomas, you know, he spends far too much time playing with his toys, playing with motorbikes, playing with building stuff when he should be making money, which would then pay for stuff like this. But yeah, I mean, one thing I will say, and it shows how fucking skint I've been recently, actually, is... I'm really grateful for all you lot who are on my Patreon. It's not a lot of money. It's about, I think it was, last one was about £56. But I was that broke the other week that when the Patreon money came in, it was like a fucking godsend because I was, you know, literally practically penniless. Not because I had no money. I was owed a lot of money from various things where invoices hadn't been paid, you know. And I'm I'm a bit better now because I've sold a load of things that I had for sale and whatever. But at the moment when the last Patreon payment came, about a week or a few days before this video, I was fucking skint and the Patreon actually made all the difference. And I shouldn't be in a fucking situation like that. That's ridiculous. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, appreciate, really do all this kind of anything people do to help out. But also I got to help myself by not being such a fucking dickhead with money. So, yeah, you know, of course I'm still going to be spending on cars, but I should make money off cars as well, not just fucking spend them. So, yeah, that's the plan. In other news, not like it necessarily needs it, but it's a safe bet. In 
in this box is let me show you ARP head bolts for this. I can do them in situ, literally cam cover off and then one bolt out, one bolt in. It's just a extra bit of safety really because considering I'm on 530 horsepower and standard head bolts, yeah it can do it, but yeah it's a bit iffy. So for an easy job and the sake of like not even 200 quid, I'm going to do that. Oh, I'll tell you what as well, not like it's car related, but it has been because this is what slowed me down for the last fucking month from before mapping, but it's got worse in the last couple of weeks. I've had a fucked up stomach. I don't know what it is. It just hurts. Been to the doctors. They gave me some fucking tablets. It hasn't helped. And it's just, it's not stopping me doing anything, but it makes it hard to fucking concentrate as much as I could because I've got this awful fucking pain in my guts. And uh, so yeah, that's slowing me down as well. Hopefully they'll fix that soon because it's pissing me off. On a subject of making money, anyone want to buy a turbo? I mean, to be honest, for all I know, by the time you see this, this is sold because every time I bloody put turbos up for sale, they seem to sell in fucking seconds. But this is a very, very cool turbo. It's, well, Officially, a HE300WG, but in reality, it's the old Holy Grail HX32 in terms that most people understand. And weirdly, this is a V code one, V assembly. V is basically prototype test unit. So what the hell this was from, I don't actually know, but it was a, a prototype stroke test turbo. And in all honesty, it's exactly like in every way, wheel specs and housing specs, a HX32 seven centimeter. So it's basically a HX30 turbine wheel and HY35 or HX35 compressor wheel and a seven centimeter T2, T28, whatever you want to call it, turbine housing. The only difference I can see between this and a normal HX32 is this inlet is slightly longer. Like normally it finishes about there. This one goes a bit longer, but that doesn't affect anything. So why that's done, I don't know. But it's fucking awesome. It's used, but Clearly, barely. I mean, like, absolutely no play, no damage. Wheels look like new. It's definitely been ran, but that's all. Can't really see too well in there, but yeah. It's been ran, but apart from that, don't know. It's a marine application, the OE stuff, which explains why the turbine housing looks to me like it's a bit corroded, but only like cosmetic and it's painted um, like VHT high temp paint to keep it from well looking shitty really and the compound is just silver like it already was but yeah it's fucking cool very very badass turbo but I need to be sensible and not hoard things so I'm going to sell it price wise I reckon I'm going to sell it for 400 quid, 350, 400 quid, 400 quid I think, but yeah, don't know if anyone wants it here, who's watching this video, it's probably going to be too late because when I put things for sale these tend to sell super fast, but just in case, for the first time in over a week I'm actually going to work on my own car and I'm going to do the head bolts. Basically, I can't really drive the car at the moment. Well, test the car properly because it's wet outside. So, fuck it. I'm just going to do these head bolts while I've got some time. So, I'm going to take out the originals one at a time and fit the ARPs. So far, all looks good. All nice and clean under there. Turbo looks fucking gigantic. Well, it is. And, yeah, all of that, you know minutes to get to this stage piece of piss just 
whip off the cam cover and do a couple of wires easy and it's all nice and clean and good so that's a good start now that's the ALP head bolts installed and torqued up to 80 pound foot which is what they're recommended and yeah job done it was good and bad news with my homemade tool though good news was the weld didn't break you know my weld was strong enough the bad news was the heat had obviously made it brittle as fuck and it snapped way at, you know way before the weld in the end the whole thing just yeah the heat obviously just fucking ruined it so i thought oh shit you know i'm not gonna be able to do it and i thought well i wonder what i can do because the thing is this is the longest one i had which is not long enough basically only by a bit it, it fits um six of them but the four end ones because they hold the cam caps where well, they're like they go through the cam caps this wasn't deep enough so i had an idea i got a 10 mil socket and ground it real thin and then it was just small enough to fit in the holes and yeah done it so providing my torque wrench isn't lying and that really is 80 pound foot well technically 81.7 i think it's saying but whatever as long as it's not drastically under reading then we're good i went through them twice as well just to make sure i'd not missed any or fucked anything up and yeah they all clicked off just the same so I'm going to reseal the cam cover gasket because it was leaking from somewhere. I can't, don't know where, but this time I'm going to add a bit more goop. And um, yeah, should be good to fucking go. That's the cam cover back on. All sealed up properly this time. Turns out I didn't use any sealant on it at all. You know, just the gasket the first time round. And if I remember right, even the workshop manual tells you to use a bit on each corner. So, you know, no wonder it's leaking, really. And it's all done. All back together. Looking good. And yeah, pretty happy with that. Pretty confident it won't leak anymore. And now I, uh, the weak point is now, what, the pistons? Because the, uh, and I ain't got the stock head bolts anymore. So, yeah. Still 513.6 or whatever it was horsepower, but a little bit safer now. So, not like it matters, but hey, it's fucking cheap insurance. But on that note, I'm done for the night. I'm done for this video, actually. I know there's no action. I expect people expected the next video after the dino one to be fucking ripping around, but instead it's been uh, fault finding and fucking delays because of life so yeah next video we'll be back testing this and hopefully it's all good and then can time it too but yeah next video might be on this channel might be on thomas's might be on both we're gonna do like me and him together in a couple of days i'm gonna do like an explanation video on the kits that obviously Thomas makes to install these engines, you know, be it a normal KO3 one or a 225 BAM fancy one or a mental one like mine, you know. I mean, I guess it's an advert, but in reality, it's mostly a, well, advert's probably too strong a word, promotion maybe, where it just explains why it's a good swap. Do you know what I mean? Can, Make people realise it's actually DIYable and it's very user friendly and it's so on because you know people K swap these or they two ZZ these or they put V6s in and all that. Every one of those conversions is way harder to work on afterwards, way worse value for money. Most of them's way more expensive. Whereas this setup is like it's neat, it's easy to live with, it's easy to fit, it's easy to work on, you know. Not going to do a video, like a, a, an install video, like, you know, exactly how to do it, because 
well, I don't need to. That can be for people who actually buy the kit and need to install it and they need some instructions. But a video to show you all, you know, that it's a fucking good idea anyone can really do if you've got the kit. Then, uh, yeah, that's what the video is going to be all about. This It's funny, it's like, people say, oh, it's, it's so simple. It's like, it's simple if you've got this kit. If you haven't, it ain't simple. If <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it fits, it works brilliantly well. But unless you had all the little bits and pieces that Thomas has made to make the kit work, it is a fucking lot of work. And it's, you know, it'd be way beyond my means. To be honest, even if I had only the mounts, it would still be on my means to work out the rest of it. You know, it's like, but he can supply fucking everything. So it's, you know, ideal. Job done. And uh, cheers to everybody that watches and likes and comments. And especially the Patreon people. Because like I said, you fucking saved the day the other week with the 50, 60 odd quid that I get off Patreon. Because I genuinely needed it when that came in. I don't want to get in that situation again. I never have before and I don't want to ever again because that was bad. But yeah. Thanks a lot, and I'll uh, see you next time. Ta-la.